I've got great news. I managed to book a table for this Sunday at your favorite restaurant. They called me to let me know a spot had opened up suddenly. We can celebrate your birthday there just like you wanted. I'm sorry, honey. I'm not celebrating my birthday this year. I should have told you sooner, but I got so caught up with work, I forgot to mention it. Why the sudden change of plans? We've been looking forward to this day for months. Brian was so excited about going out for dinner as a family, too. You know, it's only a matter of time until he becomes a teen and starts dreading spending time with his parents. I know, Eliza, but I am due to fly to the United States as part of a parliamentary delegation. I'm leaving tomorrow. I don't think I need to explain why that's more important than a birthday dinner. Right, I just thought it'd be different this time around. But I guess work comes first. Please try not to be too upset. I promise I'll bring back plenty of souvenirs for you and Brian. Okay, thank you. I love you. I love you too. Did he leave? Yes, he left this morning. I can't believe you didn't ask him to stay. Wasn't he the one who suggested you go out for a fancy dinner? How many times is he going to go back on his word? Don't say that, Courtney. He's a busy man. It's not like he's going on a vacation. It's official business. You keep making excuses for him. When is he ever at home anymore? He's at work during birthdays, weddings, funerals. Don't you think he's being unfair to you? I knew what I was getting into when I agreed to marry him. I knew he was full of passion and determination. I knew he was ready to work tirelessly to get to the top of his career, but I didn't mind. If anything, it was the opposite. Back then, I found it endearing. You are allowed to change your mind. Your marriage contract isn't a prison sentence. You can leave anytime you want. You know it's not that simple. Besides, I don't want to give up on our marriage. I love him. Do you mean it? Despite everything he's put you through, has he ever been by your side when you needed him? To this day, I can't forget the desperation in your voice when you called from the hospital that day. I've asked you multiple times to stop bringing that up. I'm sorry, but I can't forget it and neither should you. You were suffering alone, pleading with him to come to you and he didn't even bother replying to your texts. Courtney, stop it! He had his phone on mute! What are you trying to accomplish? You're only reopening old wounds. I'm sorry, but seeing my best friend like this, it just breaks my heart. How can you be content with your marriage? How can you say you're in love with a man who's been nothing but cold and dismissive to you? What do you know about my life? You don't know what he's like behind closed doors. He's a loving husband and a caring father. Is he really? Because he seems far from it from what you've told me over the years. I shouldn't have said anything. Why did I think involving a friend in my family affairs was a good idea? I'll learn my lesson and keep things for myself from now on. No, please don't. You can't keep bottling up these negative emotions. It'll only make you feel more miserable in the long term. Didn't you say you felt like a weight was lifted off your chest every time you vented your frustrations? If you no longer wish to speak with me about your issues, perhaps you could find a therapist. You know I can't do that. If the word gets out, Stephen's reputation's going to be forever tarnished. I can already see a million different ways his opponents can spin the story. I don't even want to think about the impact it's going to have on Brian's life. But how would the word get out? Therapists are required to maintain confidentiality. I'm sure you'll be safe. The fact that they're required to keep things confidential brings me no comfort whatsoever. One thing being married to a politician has taught me is that nothing is ever truly confidential as long as there's a human element involved. Now you just sound paranoid. Last week I found out that our neighbor had a brain tumor. I'm sorry to hear that, but what does that have to do with therapy sessions? The family has decided to keep it a secret for the time being. Nobody mentioned it to me, I just found out about it. I see. I don't want to lose your friendship, Courtney. You're the only person, apart from my husband, who I can trust completely. Please try to be a bit more understanding about my situation. And please try to be more supportive of our marriage. Okay, I promise I'll try. I guess his workload's bound to decrease eventually, right? Right. I just thought of something crazy. I don't know if I should tell you, though. I doubt you'd have started if you weren't planning on continuing. Just tell me what it is. <laughs> You want to get closer to your husband, right? Of course I do. Remember how you said your relationship has started to feel somewhat dull? I do, but hearing you say that somehow makes it seem worse. 
Well, what if you did something exciting and spontaneous to spice up your marriage? As long as that something isn't inappropriate, you know Brian is a light sleeper. Don't worry, it'll only be as inappropriate as you want it to be. I don't like where this is going. Okay, hear me out. What if you paid him a surprise visit on his birthday? You know which hotel he's staying at, right? Hmm, that's actually not a terrible idea. He's staying here. Is that a veiled insult? What? Never! Anyway, I guess I could ask our nanny to stay overnight, but won't he be confused to see me show up out of nowhere? He's going to be out and about during the day anyway, and he'll probably be exhausted when he returns to the hotel room. He's going to be out of the hotel room all day? That's even better. Why? You can surprise him with an impromptu birthday celebration. He loves surprises, right? Wear a nice dress, get a small cake, and a nice bottle of champagne, and surprise him when he gets back. I can't just pop out of the dark and yell surprise. What if he gets a heart attack or gets so startled he drops something important? Oh my god, Eliza, he's a fit, healthy, 35-year-old. He'll be fine. I don't know. I don't want to risk it. Besides, aren't surprise parties for fun people in their 20s? I'm not sure I can pull it off. What are you saying? There's no age limit on being a fun-loving person. You'll do just fine. I am sure he'll like it. And if he doesn't, if he gets mad at you for putting so much effort into a surprise, maybe you'll see your relationship in a different light. It's true that he always loved my surprises when we were dating. Maybe this could work. But how'd I get into his hotel room without him knowing? I've got an idea, but you're not going to like it. It's mildly illegal. I don't want to do it then. No, listen. I saw the address of the hotel he's staying at. You know I've spent over 15 years in the hospitality industry, right? I can call in a favor and get you the master key. Isn't that dangerous? What if he gets angry and tries to sue the hotel? Sue the hotel? <laughs> Seriously. Come on, Eliza. They'll manage to survive a lawsuit or two. I'm ready to take full responsibility if things end up going south. Okay, you've convinced me. I'll go and book a ticket. Don't forget to send me updates along the way. I won't. I'm here. I can't believe your plan worked. I've put the cake and the champagne in the fridge since I'm not sure when he'll be coming back. Did you change your clothes? I did. I put on a stunning red dress. He always tells me he loves the color red on me. Fingers crossed everything will go well. I'm cheering you on from here. I've put a note on the table so as not to surprise him too much. I'll hide in the bathroom and come out when he knocks on the door three times. Seems a little unnecessary, but well, you know best. I think he's coming in. I'm so anxious. It'll be fine. Just get ready to wow him. Oh, I don't think he's alone. What do you mean? Isn't it a bit late to host guests? Can you tell who it is? I'm not sure, but she does have a familiar voice. I think I might have heard her on TV once, though right now she doesn't sound as stern. Well, she's probably just one of his colleagues. I don't think they saw the note. They headed straight to the bedroom. I can hear them a bit more clearly now. They sound very cheerful. I can even make out her name. He's calling her Vanessa. Are you sure you heard that right? Vanessa? Yes, I told you they're standing right in front of the door. Eliza, please open that door immediately or lock it and I'll find a way to get them out of the hotel room. Why? Do you know who she is? If that's who I think it is, it's better if you open the door right away. Oh, they've stopped talking, but I can still hear them kissing? I can't believe this. He's cheating on me. I wonder how long this has been going on. I'm going to go out there and confront them. No, oh, please just wait a moment. I'll call the front desk and get them to leave the room somehow. After that, you can grab the cake, the note, and the champagne and leave quietly. Why would I leave quietly? I can hear them through the door. This is torturous. Trust me, it's better this way. I'm going to confront them. Eliza, wait. Eliza. I'm in the laundry room. Why? What happened? I opened the door and confronted him. He looked shocked and the woman he was with looked as though she was barely suppressing laughter. What a psycho! I was so furious I stormed out of the room. He didn't even follow me. Is this the woman who was in the room with him?
Yes, I think so. Her hair looked a little bit different, but it was her. It's just as I thought. The woman your husband was with is his political rival, Vanessa Meyer. What? Are you sure? How come I've never heard of her? I'm positive. She came onto the scene about a year ago and has been working out of the public eye. It's best if you don't do anything rash. She's said to be an ill-tempered, cold-hearted control freak with no empathy. Not a single one of her subordinates enjoys working for her, and the general public can't stand her either. Yet it's rumored that her party wants her to run as presidential candidate next year. Can you believe that? You can't be serious. If all that's true, how's she not out of a job by now? Her family's extremely wealthy, and I guess she has the right connections. I don't get it. How do you know all this insider information? You know my brother-in-law, right? He's the one who told our whole family about her during a drunken rant. Apparently, he worked at their office for over 18 years, and she fired him in a week for not looking put together enough. Can you imagine how humiliating that must have been for him? Getting fired by the untouchable young nepotism hire? But he couldn't retaliate since, I guess, she's a dangerous person to cross. I wouldn't expect any better from a shameless homewrecker. But what should I do now? I can't just hold my tongue and divorce him quietly in fear that his mistress might come after me. I honestly have no idea. I'm still not over the fact that Steven's sleeping with his opponent. I feel like someone's going to come after me now that I hold this information. Is this really the time for theatrics, Courtney? I'm sorry, just come back home first. You might be able to think of something during the flight. Sure, that sounds good. I'll head to the airport. Honey, where are you? Are you still at the hotel? Oh, look who finally decided to look for me. Let me guess, you decided to finish what you'd started and now you're texting me straight out of the shower? You weren't making any sense, Eliza. What you saw, it was just a misunderstanding. I had no idea you were planning on coming here. How exactly was it a misunderstanding? I caught you red-handed. I don't even want to think about what I'd have witnessed if I'd waited a bit longer. You wouldn't have witnessed anything. It was just a kiss, nothing more. Vanessa's an old friend of mine. An old friend you've never brought up in the conversation with your wife? Yes, I've been friends with her since university. We met long before I even met you. I didn't mention her because I thought you might misinterpret our relationship and get jealous. Judging by your reaction, my assumption was right. Are you really trying to pull the wool over my eyes? Or have they perhaps updated the definition of the word friend? I'm telling the truth. I swear I haven't laid a finger on her in years. We dated for a few years in our 20s, but since then we've been strictly platonic. So she's your ex-girlfriend? How does that make things any better? I am telling you this to illustrate that we clearly didn't work out as a couple. We're both in love with different people now, and neither of us is trying to rekindle the old romance. Great, so you're both cheaters. What a great match. Does her beloved know about her infidelity? Would she be mad if I let him know what she's really like? I really don't think he'd mind since they aren't in a relationship. Even then, he might just not care. Look, Eliza, I'm really putting my life on the line here. Vanessa will kill me if she finds out I told you about her unrequited love. Why? Who is it? I can't risk you contacting him. In fact, that ties perfectly into one of the topics I wanted to touch upon. Could you refrain from disclosing her name in the divorce papers? If you want to get a divorce, that is, personally, I believe we can still work through this. In what world do... Please don't tarnish my mistress's reputation and let's reconsider the divorce belong next to one another. If you think I'm scared of you or that wicked witch, you're gravely mistaken. Please don't insult her. She's one of the brightest, kindest, and most genuine people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. She helped me pick out our anniversary gifts. She helped me pay off the mortgage on our house. She introduced me to the people who'd be crucial to the advancement of my political career. I was even thinking of introducing you to one another in the near future. I knew you'd get along well. You can't drag her name through the mud because of a little misunderstanding. Oh, I'm sure knowing her has been quite a pleasure. I hate knowing you're typing out these outrageous words calmly when I'm struggling to see the letters through my tears. I hate that you're reading my desperate words with the same blank look you get when you stand behind a podium and orate about humility and compassion. I hate you, Stephen. I'm sorry, but I really do. I know you don't mean that. You're just saying that in the heat of the moment. Listen, Eliza, we've been married for almost a decade. Think about all we've built together. Think of Brian and his future. Why does he have to suffer for the mistakes of his parents? Mistakes of his parents? God, you have no conscience, do you? 
Are you going to start listing every single flaw you've found in me over the years? Every little mistake of mine? I just want you to grasp the full gravity of the situation. You're destroying our family over a kiss that meant nothing to either party. We were just exchanging pleasantries and got caught up in the moment. It might as well have been a handshake or a hug. Vanessa's like a sister to me. Well, if that's how you think one should treat their siblings, I am very glad you're an only child. You know that's not what I meant. Steven, what I saw in the hotel room isn't the only reason I'm asking for a divorce. The truth is, there are years of pent-up frustration and resentment that's been festering inside of me. And what happened today was the last straw. Why didn't you tell me earlier? We could have figured something out. When was I supposed to tell you? Did you ever try to make me feel like I could share my feelings and emotions freely without being dismissed half-heartedly because you had more important matters to tend to? Well, how was I supposed to know what you've been holding back? I thought you were happy with your life. Whatever you desired, vacations, properties, designer items, I went out of my way to attain. I am sorry I don't have the time to listen to you pouring your heart out when I return from a 14-hour workday, but that just comes with the job. Those long hours are part of the deal. You knew what you were getting yourself into, so why are you shifting the full blame on me? Do you think I enjoy spending holidays away from my wife and son? Do you think I wasn't devastated when I finally checked my phone and saw your messages that day? Do you sincerely believe the reason I missed Brian's big play was that I preferred listening to some guy babbling about the crime rate going up because someone had spray painted their initials on a park bench? I am working day and night because I believe in time the work I'm doing can benefit not just the three of us, but the whole country. Please stop. It's too much. It's too late for us. Our relationship, it'll never get better, nor will it ever be the same. So this is final. You really want us to get a divorce? I need some time. Once I get home, I'll think everything over and let you know what I've decided. I understand. Please know that I really do love you. And please think about what I said about Vanessa. She already has a lot on her plate. She doesn't deserve to be punished for trying to cheer me up. You really can't let us end on a good note, can you? Fine, I'll think about it, but I can't promise anything. Stephen offered to settle the divorce outside of court. He offered to let me keep the house in exchange for not mentioning bringing up Vanessa's name. I spent days racking my brain trying to come up with a course of action that'd be the most beneficial to my son and me. Eventually, I decided to trust Stephen's words. I chose to believe that Vanessa really was a kind person at heart and that Stephen never intended to cause his family any harm. So I filed for divorce citing his liaison with Vanessa as the reason. I didn't really have much evidence other than some texts. I was so enraged I completely forgotten about collecting evidence. Luckily, Stephen corroborated my account of the day. Though he still insisted it was just a kiss and it was a one-off mistake. It's been five years since that day and Brian and I are still here, safe and sound. Perhaps I was afraid for no reason after all. In the middle of our divorce proceedings, Vanessa left her party just as quietly as she joined it. I heard she quit politics and moved to the US. I can't say that I'm surprised, even if she wasn't guilty in the eyes of the law. Word tends to get around quickly in our small country and people aren't too fond of homewreckers. Stephen was also forced to resign amidst the divorce, but I suppose it was more a pre-election gimmick than anything else since two years later he was able to return to his job in a less public role. He was upset that I'd publicly shamed his dear friend, but he got over it fairly quickly since Vanessa herself refused to take any action, legal or not, against me. In order to better co-parent Brian, Stephen and I started attending post-divorce counseling sessions. It's still a long way to go, but I think it's helped us be more amiable with one another. Right now, we're just trying to be good parents to our son.